Hello and welcome back to another guide for Warhammer 40k Chaos Gate. My name is Saiken and today we're going to go into 10 tips that I wish I knew before starting Warhammer 40k Chaos Gate. I am doing concise guides with no repetition, no BS, so we're jumping right into the topic. Tip number one, the action point system. Tip number one, I wish I had known how the action point system works. This is a complicated topic, uh, which I will explain in a separate video in detail. But the short and sweet is that a turn in this game is uh, basically until you are hitting uh, the end turn button or until every single one of your Grey Knights has used all of their ability points. However, that is where the uh, specific situation starts, as there are a couple of events that will restore um, action points. So typically you are having an out of combat movement phase, and the moment that the first enemy pack is discovered, combat starts. With start of combat, every single one of your marines will get AP back and automatically reload their weapons, plus automatically uh, will uh, have their auto abilities reset. At the end of a combat, when you're killing a pack, you will go into out of combat mode again. That means everybody again gets their ability points, uh, their action points back and will reload uh, their weapons. So theoretically and very practically, you can move from pack to pack to pack and be in combat, out of combat, in combat, out of combat without any turn happening or any turn uh, taking in the meantime. Which is the reason why you can clear, even on legendary difficulty, maps in just one turn. The key concept there is you need to have teleportation and need to teleport at the right moment. But I will talk about that in a separate video. Moving on. Tip number two, inspecting enemies and understanding the details of hit chances. Let's start with the letter one. Whenever you are attacking an enemy, there is a little um, I for information right next on the right hand side of your hut click on that and start doing that regularly to just see all of the modifiers since there is no hit chance it's all about the damage and um, the different effects that are influencing that secondly um, you can uh, click on every single enemy uh, in the game uh, every single enemy does have a little info uh, box underneath their health plate. The moment that you click onto them, you can not only see their precision uh, targets and what you could do if you were to crit against them in melee, but you can also see all of their stats. And that includes, uh, quite frankly, the hit points, uh, their, uh, their stun level, the armor that they do have, but more importantly, all of their abilities. Whenever I found out uh, that a new enemy has arrived, I was reading very carefully through all of uh, uh, their uh, key abilities and was trying to do what uh, to understand what they can do before they even got the single first attack. That is important because a lot of these uh, things can be countered if you know the precision targets and know that you can counter some of the abilities or you see that the enemy has a lot of auto abilities you can for instance disrupt them and therefore make sure that uh, they are uh, not able to execute on the auto abilities. Tip number three, the cover mechanic and range, which is very important. I wish I knew that uh, the cover mechanic works as it works. So there are two cover uh, mechanics in Warhammer, half cover and full cover. And contrary to, for instance, XCOM, where the percentage die decides whether or not you get hit and cover influences uh, that, uh, the uh, cover here will mainly deal damage reduction or offer damage reduction. For starters, cover always offers a 45 degree angle. So again, that is different to XCOM, for instance, where cover almost has a 180 degree angle. It's 50, uh, 45 degrees in both sides, so 90 degree. As long as enemies are within that spectrum, so on the other side uh, of cover, they will receive minus one damage penalty for half cover and full cover provides a head-on uh, damage modifier that usually lets you miss. Since there is no hit chance, you're always guaranteed to hit, but cover reduces it. And if you position yourself well specifically in full cover, you can make sure that you're na not getting hit. On top of that, the cover mechanic essentially comes together with a distance mechanic Every single weapon has a distance. The baseline is 10 distance for a bolter. 
but that 10 distance is the maximum distance that the weapon can fire. There are three ranges, short range, anything to up to half of the, uh, uh, the range, which typically uh, comes at no penalty. Then on top of that, uh, medium range, which is between 50 and 75% of the damage uh, of the maximum range, that comes at minus one. And then 75 to 100 uh, uh, percent of the maximum range which comes at a minus two damage so here's the kicker with that and why that is important if you combine both cover and distance and you're for instance having a team that is a little bit further in the back you can reduce the damage by minus three per shot and if you add other things like blind on top of it with another stacking minus two you're up to a minus five effectively negating most of the cover uh, most of the damage Tip number four, I wish I knew how afflictions and effects work. Uh, afflictions are very important in this game and knowing just the core ones is going to make the game easier for you. I clustered them for you into three different topics. Number one, damage and damage like afflictions. Bleed is the first one. Uh, bleed only affects um, uh, organical units, so mechanical units are immune, but bleed stacks and you can stack up bleed to very crazy numbers. Bleed will be reducing itself by one at the end of every single round, uh, but generally units don't last that long. It comes together with burning, which is the brother of bleed, affects all units, but does not stack. So mechanical units can burn as well. The third one in this um, uh, category is plague, which affects only your units and cannot affect enemy units um, and will plague you typically for either two uh, per turn for three turns or in a decreasing fashion three to one uh, comes uh, out at the exact same amount of damage typically six points of damage and finally the last one in this category is vulnerable which is uh, going to add plus two damage from any source of attack that also means from any affliction that is running so um, burning would go Go up from two to four and bleed would go up from whatever value plus two the second category of afflictions is the one that are influencing the damage of the enemy um, starting with weakened uh, minus two damage from melee um, blind uh, which is minus two damage for range and then on top of that uh, disoriented uh, or uh, rather disrupted uh, where all of the auto abilities of an enemy are uh, taken away so blinded and weakened in particular are interesting one blinded uh, more so than weakened because if you stack blind plus long range plus uh, medium cover that's already minus five points of damage on any shot that the enemy is trying to shoot at you that's crazily good Speaking about crazy, uh, there is a third category which I would call a disabling. Uh, in disabling we do have crazed, uh, which basically creates a 50% chance to attack allies uh, each turn. And uh, the other one would be enraged, uh, which you're typically uh, getting um, with taunt and taunt-like um, items. Both of them are good because um, they are allowing you to uh, force the enemy into attacking whatever target you want. Enraged, by the way, overrides craze, just so that you are know uh, that you are in the knowing there. And the last one of the disabling uh, ones is stunned, and that brings me to the next tip. Tip number five, the, I wish I would have understood the importance of stun and action point shifting. That are the two single strongest concepts in building your characters. So number one, uh, executions happen when the stun bar of an enemy is uh, filled. Most of uh, the organic enemies can be stunned and once they are stunned, the next attack will automatically be a crit, giving you the option to execute. Once you click execute, it will give an AP to all of the knights. And the reason why that is so good lies in a couple of abilities that highly, highly scale with them. For instance, the chaplain's ability uh, to give an extra AP to the executor three times a turn. Melee weapons like the Endbringer that give you once or twice a turn two additional AP when you're executing a target and various options to apply a lot of stun in a short amount of time, the Empyrean Brain Mine being one of these examples. 
The reason why stun teams work incredibly well in this uh, game is because they apply stun very fast and once you get the execution train rolling you will get between four and six or seven um, AP with every single execution making it ultra execution efficient and therefore kind of overflowing you with AP not allowing the enemy to work. The second concept uh, that I wish I had understood are action point shifting concepts where you are basically using abilities such as honor the chapter to push a lot of uh, action points on single characters that are hitting exceptionally strong. If you pair that with buffs for those characters such as the biomancies of the apothecary which allow for extra crit damage and extra stun damage and then put that onto a character like for instance the interceptor that does have a lot of passive melee uh, buffs and the self ability to teleport then you are effectively not only having three action points on that character but a multitude of action points with individual resets the right weapon and uh, the right buffs a character can have up to in a standard eight action points per round without even breaking a sweat and can hit for incredibly high amounts of damage we're talking about uh, up to 20 points uh, per individual slash so you can already see how that accumulates uh, to and spirals out of control because you're just going to destroy every single character or every single opponent with that so those two concepts uh, once i had understood them and internalized them uh, made me build teams a bit differently in this game tip Number six, the importance of Aegis Shield and Armor in general. Armor is the value that will reduce the damage uh, that the enemy is doing uh, get, uh, to you. Armor typically is per round. So if, for instance, this chaplain here comes in with 11 armor, that means he will need to take at least 12 points of damage before uh, he is uh, losing a single hit point. There are only a very few attacks that bypass armor. Typically, these are plague spray attacks that have armor piercing. And sometimes uh, the uh, warp charge will give you an event where every attack is going to bypass armor. However, these are far and few in between, which is why armor is so important. There, uh, the developers have uh, caught up to the idea that armor is quote unquote too powerful. Therefore, enemies have been introduced in the DLC that will shred armor um, via grenades and via their normal attacks. However, what the uh, creators haven't thought about is the Eagle Shield, and that is part two of this tip. Eagle Shield uh, is an ability that will allow your character to uh, create extra armor. Um, if you're uh, familiar with uh, certain builds, you could, for instance, with uh, the Chaplain here, get up to two additional Aegis Shield and specifically as uh, melee weapons, any form of staff will give you uh, Aegis uh, Shield. Some of them to the point where you're getting a lot of Aegis uh, Shield with a staff. Um, and the staffs typically do have some sort of automatic trigger for Aegis Shield as well so that you don't even need to use uh, uh, any uh, any form uh, of AP in order to do this. Um, one weapon as an example who does that particularly well is Gatebinder. If you do have an option to automatically trigger Aegis Shield, then this here would be plus two Aegis Shield. And with a couple of other Aegis Shield options, you can run up to um, including armor, 20, 20 plus armor in the late game. So tip here is don't neglect and sleep on Aegis Shield, specifically your support characters will need it. Tip number seven, do not sleep on sources of free damage. Your overall 12 AP, so ability points uh, per round, will not be the only thing how you are able to dish out damage. There are options that do not cost you AP and you should uh, seriously consider putting them in. A few of those uh, that I wish I knew would be Support Fire, which is an ability where if the character is in range, uh, they will shoot a target that has already been shot in that uh, same round. Support Fire will always have a fixed amount of damage and does not suffer from ranged penalties. Interceptor in particular can do that twice around for five points of damage.
Secondly, Vulnerability. Vulnerability is a great debuff and I highly recommend testing it. You can either get it uh, via skills or via war gear. The Seeker Skull is the right uh, thing to take. Vulnerability means that damage from all sources will increase by two and it really stacks up. The Seeker uh, Skull in particular has a relatively large blast area and doesn't cost you any AP whatsoever. Thirdly, rider effects on uh, Psy Bowls or Psy Strikes. The game comes with a Psy enhanced striking option with both ranged and melee and this does not cost you any extra AP but typically the effects are great and I use Epistor's Woe as a blaster to illustrate that. Uh, the uh, Psy effect here uh, gives you a whooping 50% crit and if you're critting then you can hit uh, precision targets of uh, the respective target. There are other great effects, but generally don't sleep on them as they can be very, very powerful. Next up, melee attacks of opportunity. The game features an interesting system of attacks of opportunity, which is closely um, aligned to kind of D&D 5th edition. As long as you stay within melee, you can walk around the target, but the moment that you are running away from the target, if they are not disoriented or disrupted, they will issue an attack of opportunity. That also goes for enemies. If you're combining, for instance, taunting or, uh, or craze with someone staying in melee, then typically that leads to an additional attack of opportunity for free damage. And finally, knockback in various forms can come in the form of a weapon or with a grenade or even with stratagems. Knockbacks can lead to one-shot kills if the enemy is knockbackable and if you push them over a ledge. So don't sleep on those either. Which brings us to tip number eight, utilization of terrain. There are quite a few hazards within uh, the game that can uh, work to your advantage. For starters, most of the columns, uh, sometimes ammunition uh, boxes, and what not can be either exploded or pushed over. There's always a little sign uh, that either indicates that you need to shoot it or that you need to push it over uh, in order to create a damage. Typically, that means either a cone around uh, the uh, area of impact or um, a column breaking kind of in a line. What is important to know is that columns in particular, so structures that collapse, will deal direct damage to the health and bypass any armor. That is incredibly helpful because some of the enemies come with low um, health but high amounts of armor. Secondly, the uh, terrain also offers uh, options to basically uh, force enemies to walk through afflicted uh, terrain. Particularly flamers are good in order to do that where you are setting areas ablaze and then force enemies to run through it. After they have moved, they will um, also take the fire damage at the end of their turn. So use that to your advantage as oftentimes the um, environment gives you AOE attacks that you otherwise couldn't do. Tip number nine, I wish I had understood how blooms and uh, the bloom seed uh, work. So uh, every single planet does have a corruption level from one to five. Once the corruption level reaches five, there is a potential of a Morbus Gate opening. You need to do a specific mission in order to prevent that. If you fail that, uh, that mission or cannot reach it in time, one Morbus Gate opens. If five Morbus Gates open, the game is over. So that's the gist of it. However, there is a little bit more details to it. So I wish I knew at the beginning of the game that there are a couple of uh, things that are important here. Number one, um, the bloom can uh, uh, grow by up to three dots. So be very mindful of how much bloom is growing. Secondly, uh, the bloom can spread. You can see that via the spreadings, not only growing on the home planet, but growing on adjacent systems as well, making it kind of a spreader event. And number three, um, in order to reach all of those uh, areas more effectively and in time, you want to um, get as high of a warp speed as possible and use the so-called prognosticars. I wish I had known just how important prognosticars are. If you place them right, just like I've done here, center, and then kind of in that uh, 
inner uh, ring just uh, alongside the edge you can reach almost all of the planets short of two planets every single one is impacted and the most important part about prognosticars is that the deadlines for missions will be extended by three days i wish i had known that at the beginning of the game tip number 10 loot and how it works i wish i had known how the armory access works the way that uh, the armory access works is you do have five uh, categories um, your reinforcements uh, then ranged weapon melee weapons armor and uh, war gear uh, the reason why you see nothing here is because I have gotten every single item and that brings me to the second point of this tip. Loot is unique. Uh, you do have a pool of potential items that you can get. If you are rejecting them, they go back to the pool and then they will be recycled until you cannot get any more items. Which then brings us to the question of what should you do with that information? For starters, you need to upgrade the access uh, to the individual um, tiering. Um, and then you will need to uh, collect whatever weapons are um, usable for you. You can see here kind of the numbers of all of the weapons, uh, around 40 storm bolters, between uh, 15 and 20 weapons on the other categories. With melee weapons, you do have a fair spread of around 15 melee weapons in each category. With armors, you do have around 40 power armors and around 25 uh, terminator armors. That's what you can get plus war gear, which comes in three different uh, tiers. So I wish I had known that upgrading um, the armory specifically on weapons to level uh, two or three where you can get the two uh, level two or three weapons is substantially better because you can get much better weapons and if you then put purity seals on them as in upgrade them that will make them substantially better than the default weapons so I w wish I would have known that level 2 and 3 weapons um, and level 2 and 3 armor are so much better than the stock. Bonus tip number 1 or tip number 11 overall. Servitors are important and I wish I would have known that I should prioritize them as quest rewards. You can see I am having 240 servitors and a build out ship. The only way without quests to gain servitors besides um, rare events is to use the augmentation chamber. And even fully upgraded augmentation chamber only gives you one servitor per five days. That's barely enough to keep the lights uh, on uh, and restore your hull from time to time but it is not enough in order to get the build out of the ship so i wish i had known to prioritize servitors as an important quest reward bonus tip number two or tip number 12 of uh, this guide take your time uh, for res uh, for your research i wish i had known that the game comes in certain breakpoints you are starting with the top row of research and basically the game has three large uh, sequences i don't want to spoil uh, too much here but uh, sequence number one is just getting to know the core game and basically allowing you to research that first tier. The moment that you research uh, Source of the Bloom, something will happen and you will open up a broader galaxy, more bloom spawn with different colors come into play. That is breakpoint number one. Breakpoint number two is uh, each of the colors has a unique boss. Um, as you are starting to research the bosses uh, down here, um, these bosses will appear and you will fight them. The moment that you have fought and killed three of those bosses, the game will automatically move towards a uh, loop where you need to finish the game. So it is game over from that point uh, onward, one way or the other, either you win or the enemy wins. So in terms of research, what I would therefore recommend uh, you is take your time. There is no need to rush the Source of the Bloom. Uh, the beginning of the game is actually quite good in order to get a foothold. And then once you are uh, at this point, research at your heart's content, but don't go further than uh, three um, bosses that you're killing the moment that you kill the third boss you are on a timer bonus tip number three and the last one of uh, the series tip number 13 extraction of seeds you need seeds in order to continue with the research and there are two ways uh, of getting them you also need them to upgrade your equipment um, 
Way number one is to score a melee critical hit. It needs to be melee and it needs to be a critical hit. At that point you can target whatever body part the seed is attached to and therefore attract the, uh, extract the seed. The more easy way of doing it is researching uh, this here, advanced seed access, which will give you access to the extractor service skull, which in return will offer you a plenty amount of extractor service skulls. They come with five ammunition and are allowing you to easily always extract the full bloom seed. There are a couple of other ways of doing it. Some class like the apothecary do have a skill in their skill tree to automatically always extract all seed. But generally I found that this is the easiest way of doing it and you will need a lot of uh, seeds in order to upgrade everything. I hope that was helpful for you. If you like more tips and guide videos for Warhammer, I do have a full collection of them. Feel free to check them out and see you in one of my other guys. Take care. Bye bye.